Good day to you and welcome to this podcast. I'm Pastor Steve Williamson. Glad to have you with me. Uh, We are back uh, in uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, This is the final installment of that. We're going to be covering Chapter 7. And I just want to tell you, I realize that uh, lately the teaching's been a little heavy and I'll warn you that this teaching's a bit heavy, but these are the teachings of our Lord. I mean, you talk about getting the message straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I mean, you shouldn't call Jesus that, but you know know what I'm trying to say. Uh, This is Jesus' teaching, you know, and I mean, if the apostles ever teach anything, or a prophet, or Moses, or one of the kings— People say, yeah, but that's not Jesus, like it's less important. Um, But here we have the Lord in his own words. And uh, uh, we're covering the final chapter, chapter 7. I I, I want to, uh, so just bear with me a little bit, because this is, this is, in in some instances, kind of hard to hear. Uh, not very palatable at times because it challenges us. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, there and um, uh, I, I, I just want to say that you know the scripture and, and believe me, you know, uh, it's very positive to teach about grace because grace is just reality. You know, uh, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and was raised from the dead, you have everlasting life. How can there be more grace than that? Um, and I like to teach along those lines, uh, and that's really what, what, what I want to teach, but the Sermon on the Mount, um, if a person wants to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, it's imperative for them to know the Sermon on the Mount, if, if they want to be a disciple, uh, if they want to serve Jesus, um, and, uh, I guess that sets it up enough. Let's uh, let's get things going here. Um, here we go with uh, chapter 7 of the great book of Matthew. This is part 3 of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Uh, that, that's a reality. We are judged exactly uh, the way that, um, that we judge others. Uh, so, so really, uh, if we judge someone else, we're really judging ourselves is what we're doing. And we have to judge to, to a small degree. Uh, we have to know what kind of person we're talking to or who, what kind of person is in our life. Uh, how can we make a friend? Uh, if we don't have an opinion about them? Uh, How can we know that someone is a dangerous enemy if we don't have an opinion about them? We have to judge a a little. But to nitpick over every little thing and judge and compare yourself to them and think of yourself as better than or less than and all that kind of stuff, that's what the Lord is talking about here as a negative thing, a bad thing to do. The beauty of it is if we don't judge, we're not going to be judged at all. If we don't judge, we will not be judged at all. Let's go with uh, verse 3. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, And then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Um, You know, really the way I think of that, um, uh, when when we're looking at someone far away, yeah, we might spot a speck in their eye, you know, if there's, um, but when the speck's in our own eye, from our vantage point, uh, it's huge, it's enormous. Uh, we live with ourselves. We know what our sin is like, uh, you know, and, and uh, 
we better be taking care of our own side of the street first before we try to preach to someone else or tell them how to live. Uh, so that's why Jesus says, get the log out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to get the speck out of your brother's eye. Um, verse 6. Uh, by the way, this is Matthew chapter 7. Uh, we're going with verse 6. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under your feet, and turn and tear you to pieces. Um, some some people sometimes people make a fool out of themselves by uh by witnessing to a a person over and over and over again and that person never heard them the first time didn't hear them the second time didn't hear them the third time and a person just keeps witnessing to this and that that's um that, that's really what that's talking about more than anything else. And I know that the English version here uh, says, throw your pearls before swine, which is correct, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Uh, a, a better way to translate this from the Greek would be, uh, don't give what is holy to the dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest the dogs turn unless the swine trample them under their feet and the dogs turn and tear you to pieces that would be a better translation uh, let's go with verse 7 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened Pretty precious promises right there, I think. Pretty precious promises. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? See, we can count on our Heavenly Father. We, we can depend on Him. We can count on Him. We just take that to the bank. You can count on God. He's good all the time. He's faithful. He will never, ever let us down, ever. Uh, let's, go with verse, uh, let's go with verse 12. In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. Uh, that's the golden rule right there in verse 12. Let's read that again. And everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the, that's really a foundational stone. Um, that's one of the commandments that has to do with love. Uh, and and um, um, you may remember what Jesus, you know, Jesus told us to love our heavenly Father and our neighbor as ourself. Uh, let's go with verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. You, you know what? It's really super easy to just live any way. We, I don't think so, actually, but in a way of speaking, it can be really easy for a person to live any way they want, um, not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ by by believing on the one whom God sent. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just it, it's easy to do things we're not supposed to, uh, not, retain, not retain God in our minds. Uh, not acknowledge God or give place to him or give him authority or, or love him. That's, e that's easy for a lot of people. But you, you, know, you know what? Uh, for me, I just described a nightmare. I would not want to live like that. I just couldn't and would not want to after knowing Jesus Christ uh, personally. I love Jesus. To know Jesus is to love him. And anybody who meets Jesus, they're going to love him. To know him is to love him. He's the good shepherd, desirable. I mean, you see Jesus and you want Jesus. You feel Jesus in your heart or you feel Jesus' presence and you love him. 
That's just the way it is. Anybody that doesn't love Jesus must not have met, met him is what I think. And, and the, the suffering we go through in this world, uh, I, I'm thankful that I get to go through it with God for one thing. I'm also glad that I have heaven to look forward to. Uh, but as Paul wrote, the suffering we go through in this life can't be compared with what will be revealed to us in heaven. Verse 15, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Uh, uh, you know, we have that a lot at the pulpit. There are some preachers who are, are just after people's money. Uh, and uh, there, there are also uh, uh, people who show up and uh, to church and uh you know you know play a little game and pretend uh to be a christian just to prosper their business for their reputation and things like that those types then there's many more types and basically anyone who's deceitful with us and is not straightforward and they tell us one thing and they're thinking and doing another thing that's a wolf in sheep's clothing totally an untrustworthy person we can't have anything to do with them uh, Unfortunately, well, yeah, enough said on that. Uh, verse 16, uh, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Uh, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Um, you, you know, there's a, there's a place, um, I think it's in Matthew. It's in one of the gospels. It might even, yeah, it is in Matthew, definitely. And it might be in another gospel. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, the sons of Abraham, um, will, will come from all over the place and sit down with Abraham in the kingdom of heaven uh, but they're going to be cast out, and only the slaves uh, will remain. Or another way to say it would be servants. Just that's food for thought, isn't it? Makes us think just a little bit. Um, let's go with uh, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the, st on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Um, some people believe it's better not to know, and I will say that there is some innocence in ignorance. There's definitely innocence in ignorance. Uh, a person that doesn't know the commandments cannot keep the commandments. You know, some people answer an altar call, accept Jesus as their Savior, don't think about it a whole lot the rest of their lives, and... Uh, you know, others become really religious and um, uh, and and can get into trouble in some ways. But but you know the, the thing is, if if we study, we're accountable um, because because we have knowledge. That's that's how some people say. That's how some people see it. Some people think it's better. Uh, not to study, not to have knowledge. I don't believe that. I believe in being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe in uh, in in study, and um, 
Anyway, let's, uh, let's finish this up. Here we are at verse 28. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Jesus was very unique. Um, uh, Jesus was extremely unique. Uh, he, 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 uh, he was the Lamb of God, but also Lord just he's lord he's god and uh and also the father has uh handed over judgment to jesus um so that people will respect jesus as much as they respect the father but god is one and that's another sermon for another time that's a kind of a one of the more mysterious things that the trinity um Anyway, I'm sure that I forgot about a million good things I could have brought up. Uh, I feel like I forgot a lot of things. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, that concludes the Sermon on the Mount uh, series. Uh, I think it's really great and uh, fundamental teachings of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, the world is not living according to this, these teachings, uh, but we should be because we're not of the world. Uh, any more than Jesus is of the world. And who said that? Jesus said it. Jesus said, you are, not of the, you are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Jesus also said, my kingdom is not in this world. My kingdom is in heaven. And Jesus also told us that he goes to prepare a place for us in heaven and that we'll know the way how to follow after him. Anyway, thank you uh, for joining me for this Bible study. Thank you for your time. Uh, God bless you and have a great day.